provided to the registrants by request. Just contact the chamber office for details. I'd now like to thank the year sponsor for the Education and Workforce Committee this past year, OmniRide, and the Education Vision Sponsor, Apple Federal Credit Union. I would also like to recognize our annual partners. Their partnership with the Prince William Chamber of Commerce plays a vital role as a resource to our organization and demonstrates their support and commitment to our business community. That's it, those are my few announcements, but first now I'd like to, uh, to thank you for your attention and let's get started. Uh, to kick off our event, we have a special message from our 2020-2021 Chairman of our Board of Directors, Kathy Johnson, and she is also the President of Centara Northern Virginia Medical Center. With that, I'd like to introduce Kathy. Hello, my name is Tom. Good afternoon. I'm Kathy Johnson, Chair of the Prince William Chamber Board of Directors and President of Centera Northern Virginia Medical Center. Our community is rich with promising young men and women who have demonstrated not only a commitment to academic excellence, but have excelled in a wide variety of ways. The future of our workforce and the greater Prince William community is bright with the promise of these young people. On behalf of the Chamber, I would like to offer sincere congratulations and best wishes to our 2021 Prince William Chamber of Commerce Scholarship recipients. Thank you once again to our annual partners. And now we turn our attention to the sponsors for today's event. Through their generous donations, we were able to make this event free and open to the public. You will hear from a panel of businesses about innovative programs for students in the classroom and beyond. And of course, we will celebrate the accomplishments of this year's student scholarship winners. But first, let's begin with a message from our main event sponsor, Virginia Lottery, followed by our education vision partner, Apple Federal Credit Union. Good afternoon, my name is Eileen Rogers and I bring you greetings from the Virginia Lottery. Today, many of you may be wondering why the Virginia Lottery is even here. And I'd like to make you aware that just as you, we are advocates for education. Every time we sell a Virginia Lottery product, the proceeds from that sale goes to K through 12 public education in the Commonwealth of Virginia. As a matter of fact, since 1999, we've generated more than $10 billion for Virginia schools. Now those proceeds benefit a lot of programs to include school breakfast, um, class size reduction, career and technical education, and early childhood reading intervention, just to name a few. And we also look to our communities and to our education partners so that we can support summits such as today's. And just so that you, aware, you are aware, we too recognize that circumstances have changed, but our mission to generate funds for K through 12 public education has not. So today it is truly an honor to be a sponsor of this event, and I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate all of the scholarship winners. At this time, I'm going to turn this portion over to Katie Knight from A Apple Federal Credit Union. Thanks so much, Eileen. Um, as Eileen mentioned, I'm Katie from Apple, and I wanted to let you know that we are honored to be a part of uh, the chamber and especially to be a part of this event. We're a huge supporter of education and it's where our roots are. We date back to 60 plus years ago. We were started in the education community by educators for students and for teachers. And we live those roots and that mission today. We're honored to support this event, but this year in particular. Uh, I don't know if anybody else noticed, but it was particularly challenging for all of us, especially students. Oh my goodness, you all had it the worst, I think. So we're proud of you, we're excited for you, we're happy to be here, and I have the privilege 
of introducing Steve Partridge, who's the Vice President of Strategic Partnerships and Workforce Innovation at Northern Virginia Community College. In his role, he leads the NOVA's corporate and workforce engagement, marketing and communication team, career services, grant development, event services, and institutional research. Since joining NOVA in 2016, Steve has led collaboration between the college and community across business, government, education, and nonprofit organizations to enhance NOVA's position as a critical partner. Under his leadership, the Workforce Division has implemented labor market intelligence capabilities, led the Tech Talent Pipeline Initiative, launched a first of its kind apprenticeship program with employers, including Amazon Web Services, and built employer relationships to address regional, uh, to address regional talent demands. Steve has testified before Congress and the US Senate, better him than me, regarding the national skills gap and regularly consults with congressional and administration staff on workforce issues. Prior to joining NOVA, he served as president and CEO of Charlotte Works, the Workforce Development Board of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. He also held executive positions at the Charlotte, North Carolina Chamber of Commerce and the Arizona Department of Commerce. Steve holds a master's degree in public administration from Arizona State University and a bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies from the University of Arizona. Thank you, Katie. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for having me today. And I get to I guess give a little plug for my employer. Uh, if you don't know about Northern Virginia Community College, I'm here to say that you should because uh, Talent is obviously one of the biggest issues many businesses are facing, and we are probably the largest supplier of local talent across this region, if not across the Commonwealth, with over 70,000 credit students and another 10,000 non-credit students. Uh, we definitely, if you have employees, probably some of them graduated from NOVA or passed through NOVA on the way to their four years. So we're very proud to be part of the talent supply in Northern Virginia. And we're very excited about some of the tactics we've taken over the last few years about partnering more with business, because we heard from a lot of people that, you know, graduates across the Commonwealth were graduating, but sometimes they didn't have those real world skills that you employers need. So we partnered with industry. We've got a new data center technician program that we partnered with the data centers to create. Uh, we have the AWS apprenticeship and cloud computing programs that we built with industry. And so as we create new programs, we really take it seriously that our role is to be that talent supplier. And we wanna make sure that we're listening to business and we're making sure our graduates are work ready when they show up. And if anything, you guys are fighting over our graduates because they have the skills that you need. So today's conversation is very, very exciting because I, I love and live and breathe workforce. So I'm gonna kick it off and let me just share my screen real quick so that you all can see who we have on our panel. All right. Oh, there is nothing. Oh, hang on, go back. There we go. So hopefully you can all see this. Uh, I am going to just quickly introduce everyone and then have you uh, introduce yourselves in the panel a little more about your background. But we have Matt Kellum, uh, Eric King, Robert Melvin, uh, Samantha Joe Peterson, and Susanna Steen. If you could just go in this order and just give us maybe about 10 to 20 seconds, a little background of each of you. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Matt Kellum with Dominion Energy. So I'm, I am here representing our talent acquisition efforts as a recruitment program coordinator. But I think more importantly for today's discussion, I'm also the chairperson for the Virginia Energy Workforce Consortium, which brings together industry, education, government, and community to work towards uh, these solutions that we're talking about. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm Dr. Eric King, and um one of the founders and executive director for Future Kings. Uh, Future Kings was started as both a backward looking and forward looking organization. Uh, backward looking in, in the sense that I was looking for an organization that, uh, that was teaching things I wish I knew when I was an adolescent. And forward looking is uh, in a way of helping these young men develop networks uh, for their future. So we build a program around those two things and I'm founder and executive director. A little problem finding the unmute button there, but uh, but Robert Melvin, I am um, I am a physical scientist for uh, full time for the federal government. 
I uh, also serve on Sparks, uh, Sparks Executive Board. As the principal coach for Smart Kids Coaching, uh, my goal and role is to, and, and I think Steve, Steve actually laid the foundation for what Smart Kids Coaching is all about, and that is uh, introducing, introducing students to an opportunity, to those career opportunities, connecting them so that they too can uh, experience the success that our industry is looking for. Hi everyone, I'm Samantha Peterson. I'm a systems engineer associate manager at Lockheed Martin, and I directly support the talent apprentice program here in Prince William at our Manassas site. Um, I am proud to be here and happy to be here today to talk more about our internship and apprenticeship opportunities that we offer in Manassas. And good afternoon, I'm Susanna Steen. I'm with Micron Technology and I directly connect Micron recruiting team with various programs such as Year Up and also Northern Virginia Community College just so that we can source talent and we can grow in Manassas. Um, you may have heard that our company is expanding and in order to expand, we need to have the workforce that we need. I am also the incoming chair of the Nova College Board and I currently serve uh, as the president of SPARC for Prince William County Schools Foundation as well as George Mason University's Science and Technology Campus. And I have several colleagues here also with me on this call on, uh, in this event uh, from the Manassas City Schools Foundation, as well as the Bell Manassas Park City Schools Foundation. So welcome all of you. Thank you. And actually the fact that our panel, actually I have a script here that says two minutes of introductions and we went two minutes and 10 seconds. I'm impressed already. So thank you. And we're gonna jump right into it. So. As I said, you know, talent is key to our future economic vitality as a region. And even before the pandemic, we were at historic lows as far as unemployment. Uh, if you were in the IT sector, our unemployment rate was about 1%. So, and then you went to a pandemic and everything changed. We're all at home and all of a sudden industries were shifting. Uh, hard hit was retail, hard hit was hospitality, the travel sector. But a lot of us in certain sectors could work from home and kept our jobs and were able to sort of hunker down, but a lot of industry was in transition. And so during that time, we sort of started to look around and say, listen, is this gonna kind of shift our economy? Are these things going away? Are we gonna have these people moving into these other high demand areas that we sort of saw were in demand prior to the pandemic, maybe more hospitality moving to IT or healthcare, which by the way, are the two biggest sectors of our local economy. And so right now, even though uh, you know we're starting to come out of it, uh, Restaurants are getting busy again. Retail is getting busy again. Unemployment's falling in Northern Virginia. We're not quite where we were, but in some areas we're getting very tight. And in many sectors, you're even having trouble finding people to work. Many small business complain they haven't been able to get people back. Uh, people who maybe used to be in that field have transitioned out. I know Prince William County was a big proponent of the Elevate program during the pandemic that gave people access to high demand credentials in sectors that were growing if they were displaced during the pandemic. So as we kind of think through the needs of the future economy, I think we need to think very long-term. Um, people always think higher ed is the sort of driver of what people sort of think about is I'm ready for work. But the biggest sector in preparing people for work is really the K-12. And how do we support them early on? Because if you're like a lot of my, I have two boys uh, that were in high school, one just graduated, one's in high school, kind of asking them questions at the dinner table. What are you gonna do when you graduate? Where are you gonna go to college? What are you gonna do after college is a highlight of our dinner conversation. And often they don't know. They'll tell me like, well, I'll just figure it out. I'll get the piece of paper and then I'll, I'll figure it out as I go. And so if we expect higher ed to really prepare our youth to actually go into the workforce, that's sort of a misperception. We in America don't do the greatest job. And I've looked at other countries. I've been to Germany, I've been to Singapore. Uh, I've talked to countries that take workforce development very seriously. Uh, I've met with you know, seventh and eighth graders in Germany who were going out and calling people to do internships and work experience in, in middle school, where I, I came back, asked my seventh grader at the time if he could figure out how to call someone and, and apply for a job. And he's just like, what are you talking about? And that's like 20 years away that I have to work. And I was like, no, it's not that far. Um, so we need to do a lot more, whether it's coaching, whether it's mentoring, to prepare kids for work. So I want to give the panelists I mean, five to seven minutes to talk about their company or program and how really you are sort of looking at this challenge 
from your perspective and, and maybe what solutions you're bringing to the table or things that you would like to see happen uh, in our region. And maybe we'll just go alphabetically again, maybe kick it off with you, Matt. Sure, thank you. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot to, to unpack there. And and if I start to go over my five to seven minutes, just, just hang up on me. <laughs> um, no, I, look, I can relate. Uh, so I'm actually the fourth generation of my family to work for Dominion Energy or whatever we have been called over the over the more than 100 years we've been around. Um, and, and like you, I, I have uh, children that are in third and sixth grade, and I'm curious to figure out, you know, how can I get one of those young ladies, two girls uh, into the company? And but let me go back about 10, 15 years. Um, you know, the energy industry has been very fortunate, I'm sure, like some of our other industries where, um, you know, we've been able to find talent um, and, and, you know, the, the skills that we needed were out there. Uh, you know, in the schools, especially here in Virginia, do a really good job of, of providing those skills. But at least in the energy industry's uh, case, uh, the energy industry was not really uh, promoting itself well. And, and we didn't have energy specific education in the schools, uh, be it at the secondary or post-secondary level. There were some programs at the four-year college level. Um, so, you know, I mentioned very briefly that, you know, one of the roles that I hold is not really a, a Dominion Energy role in that I'm the chairperson for uh, the Virginia Energy Workforce Consortium. And we do bring together industry, uh, so other energy employers, uh, industry associations, education, government, community, and we're working together and have been for, uh, I guess, since 2007 on creating better awareness about the energy industry. Um, creating better awareness about the careers that are in the energy industry and then working very closely with the other partners especially educators to make sure that there are energy specific pathways uh, at all levels so that students can more easily and more deliberately identify with the energy industry at a younger age and so one of those accomplishments that uh, the dominion uh, excuse me the virginia energy workforce consortium has has uh, been able to achieve is the Department of Education by law uh, now offers uh, an energy cluster. Uh, so Virginia was actually the fourth state in the country to add what's called the 17th Energy Career Cluster. We're actually the first one to do it by law. So legislation was passed in the first quarter of 2019. Uh, and then that uh, cluster and the four pathways and the eight total elective courses became available uh, July 1st of 2020. So now there is a deliberate energy pathway where schools, high schools, and, and even uh, to some degree middle schools for eighth graders can begin offering basically energy education. And that's, that was missing uh, you know, prior to that. Uh, we've also worked closely with our community college partners, uh, both on the credit side and the, the workforce side, uh, to also have energy programs offered. Um, not not to uh, to to exclude uh, you know Northern Virginia, but you know there's some other schools across the state and the community college system where uh, not only are NCCER programs and I, I won't go through the acronym, but basically there's energy recognized credentials as well as as well as other uh, indus industrial credentials uh, that community colleges can offer both on the workforce and credit side. But there's power line worker training programs which are. Uh, wildly popular, and that's a, certainly a high volume uh, career that we have. Uh, there's other uh, technology programs that are being implemented. Uh, there's uh, some uh, programs in the Central Virginia area that are being implemented, uh, both on mechanical technology and electrical technology side. So, you know, there's a lot of interest in having these stackable credential models starting at the, the uh, secondary education level, but also uh, workforce programs where folks can get a, a, a certificate that is industry recognized and, and get into their career a little more quickly. So, you know, that is really important to us on the energy industry side. Again, I do represent Dominion Energy, but frankly, I'm speaking on behalf of the entire industry and in all of our different sectors. Obviously, I think you all probably know well that, uh, so, uh, excuse me, renewable uh, energy is, is, is very popular. Uh, new technologies, especially in the Northern Virginia area, there are electric buses in some of the communities. And, and then maybe to tie it uh, up with some of the local partnership, even before all of this energy industry, or excuse me, energy education existed, uh, the folks at our Possum Point Power Station uh, there in your area have partnered closely with the middle school and high schools 
uh, for example, leveraging the welding program that exists there through the CTE programs, recognizing that those students don't just have to become welders, they have a lot of other mechanical aptitude and can really grow and develop with Dominion Energy or Possum Points Leadership's help uh, into other great careers. So uh, I'll pause there, uh, but really making sure that we have easily identifiable and deliberate pathways for our energy industry is, is something that we've had to work really closely on with our education, government, and other community partners. Great, thank you, Matt. Eric. Uh, I have a show I like to, PowerPoint I like to show, so I'll share my screen now. It was okay. Yep. Uh, can everyone see my screen all right? Yep. Okay. So uh, Future Kings in its current form is uh, creating pipelines of talent into emerging technologies. And before I continue, I would really like to uh, do a shout out to some of the uh, volunteers and supporters of Future Kings that are here on the line. Uh, Howard Ford is one of our uh, uh, senior leadership uh, Jesse Citizen, Citizen is another one of our senior leadership. Uh, Dexter Cummings is one of the founders and a board member of Future Kings. And uh, Shanika Edwards is a parent and an active volunteer with Future Kings. And I'm glad they could be here to get some of the feedback that we expect to uh, develop based on today's presentation. So uh, we are creating pipelines of talent into emerging technologies. And there's a quick background uh, on, our, uh, on both what we're doing and our history. Uh, we are teaching leadership, community responsibility, and entrepreneurship. And we're doing it from a platform of STEM education. Uh, our history starts back in 2011 uh, 20, 2010, I'm sorry, uh, as a after school program at what is now Hampton Middle School, and we had 15 students. Uh, over the course of the last 11 years, we've had about 1,000 students go through our program. Uh, and pre COVID, we, were, we had an active roster of 50 students, and we expect to grow. Uh, our mission right now is to grow to serving 4,000 students per year. Uh, Students from my program have attended Yale University, Johns Hopkins, Virginia Commonwealth, uh, George Mason, uh, Virginia, uh, and, and, and a number of other schools in the county such as, and in the state, such as Virginia State, Norfolk State, and, uh, and we have a regular pipeline into Northern Virginia Community College uh, each year. Uh, at least 40% of our graduates go and go to Virginia, uh, go to Northern Virginia Community College. And in our program at this point, we have a 100% graduation rate and we have a 91% uh, uh, rate of students who go on to college. And of those 91%, many of them do go to Northern Virginia Community College. So that's a quick background on, on who we are in our, in our history. And when it comes to creating a, a, our pipeline, we do have some methodologies that we've employed, but we had always looked at this uh, pipeline as being a matter of just workforce development. But we've had meetings recently with, uh, with individuals from the US Navy, and they have been made it clear to us that the pipeline that we're trying to create is much more than just workforce development, even though it is. Uh, they look at it as a matter of national security, and they also will frame it as a social responsibility. So that is really lit a fire under us to do more and do it better. So as a quick overview of, our, of how we do what we do, at the core of our instruction is experiential learning. And that's the model that we use. Now, 
Uh, we do after school and weekend program programming, and we have four uh, existing technical skills. And in September, we'll be adding the fifth. The four technical skills are uh, biomedical sciences, aviation engineering, computer game design, and cybersecurity. And as I said, we will be adding a fifth artificial intelligence starting in September. But the other areas of this slide show you how we blend that all together to create the whole individual. We're teaching them professional 21st century skills and things like intellectual properties and stock market investing, et cetera. And we do years, year round programming. Uh, and the majority of our work is with hands-on types of learning, but also project-based learning, um, project teaming, immersive experiences, and a number of other things. So I like. So now I'd like to get to what is our new template for our uh, for how we're going to be creating uh, these pipelines into emerging technologies. And our flagship uh, model right now is a program that was funded by Illumina Corporation, and the purpose of the project was to do COVID nineteen research. The project is led by practicing professionals, uh, Dr. Shocking Cunningham from, from uh, Two Genomics, Dr. Vashi Bryant from Northern Virginia Community College, Dr. Susan Swayze uh, from George Washington U, and Josh Copeland from, Co from Copeland Biosolutions, and they are all practicing professionals. And they are leading this COVID-19 re research project. But these are the students who are working as research assistance in that project. What the project does is it looks at the DNA of people who are susceptible to COVID-19. We're then comparing the DNA of people who are resistant to COVID-19. Uh, they expect to find that, the, uh, that there are underexpressed genes in the people who are susceptible to COVID-19. They'll then clone those genes out of the resistant people, put those genes into the susceptible people, and they expect to find that susceptible people become resistant. So that is far from a secondary school project. Uh, it is a graduate level project. And the individuals you see on the screen here are all students with one exception, they are all students in Prince William County Schools who have gone through our program, and this is a type of capstan pro project that will allow them to uh, be immediately employable as soon as they uh, graduate from, from high school. So that is a template of what we are building our instructional model around. So starting in, in September, uh, we expect that our talent pipeline will take the four existing concentrations that we have and then add a AI component to it. And we are in the process now of partnering with AI companies. We have one AI company that is working with us for the curriculum that will be followed. And then we have two other AI companies that are working with me, working with us on uh, real life AI types of uh, problems that need to be solved. And we will be training our participants and recruiting uh, new participants, be part of this program. And what we expect is that this model of having experiential learning where we have uh, working professionals with our participating students is going to be a model that can be uh, replicated and that will be the foundation for our continued innovation. Great, thank you, Eric. And I love the, uh, the fact that it's connected to Nova. So we appreciate that. Uh, next we have Robert. Oh, you're muted. Get off mute again. I also have a uh, a very short presentation, so let me let me call that up and share the screen with you. Oh. 
oh, Robert's getting that up. Oh, there we go. He's going to say that er, Eric's comments about uh, experiential learning is so critical. That's a lot of feedback we get from employers that they have the book smarts, but no real world experience. And actually 20 years ago, two thirds of high school graduates left high school having had some sort of work experience and now less than a third do. So think about that. You have a third of students have work experience, two thirds are going to college or higher ed, never having worked and picking areas they're going to work in. So this experiential piece is critical. Okay, can this, can you see this? Yep. Can you see my screen? Okay. Let me start with, with smart kids coaching. Let me start with career coaching because many folks do not, uh, we don't usually associate career coaching with our elementary and middle school and high school students. So uh, to give you a better understanding of what smart kids coaching is about, let me give you a, a three or four minute history on what, uh, why does smart kid coaching get started and what is it that we are, uh, what is the, problem that we're trying to, that we're working on to, to, uh, to resolve. And I will start with, so let's start with the problem. And this is a problem that the state has had. And you've already heard uh, many of the comments already. And this is before 2018, the state of Virginia, I'm sorry, the industries within the state of Virginia got with public schools and uh, colleges and universities and notify them that and gave them feedback that, uh, that the students or better yet the entry level employees coming to industry did not have the skill sets that they needed to be successful in industry. And we've heard that quite frankly, we've heard it so many times now in the last, uh, since this, this presentation had uh, this, this, uh, this workshop has started. As a result, the industries in the state of Virginia got together and they have already identified a set of workplace readiness skills that students should have before they leave public schools as well as colleges and universities. Now, this was the problem that existed before 2018. So, in response, Virginia Department of Education initiated a, uh, a program called the Profile of a, of a Virginia Graduate. It was the initiative designed to focus on making sure students who leave Virginia public schools are either they're college ready, job ready, or better yet, they are job ready, college ready, and life ready. So with this, with these 21st century skills, the students then will be able to be better prepared going into the workplace. But herein lies the dilemma. And this dilemma started with the students or once this went into effect, once this program, this initiative went into effect, there is a dilemma. And that dilemma is that once these students complete the seventh grade career investigation course, the seventh grade career investigations course gives them the tools that they need to achieve the goals that they want to achieve. Now, as a parent, one of the questions that every parent should be asking, and that is, once the course is completed, now what? Once my child goes through the seventh grade career investigations course, once they get the tools that they need, once they get the information that they need, what do they do with this information? It is this dilemma that birth smart kids coaching. It is this dilemma that we then, as I said on the, the Prince William County Schools Education Foundation, the question was asked, how do you create a process that takes the onus off of our school system and put the onus where it belongs? And I'm a very strong advocate that this onus belongs to us as parents. So Smart Kids Coaching then was created for the purpose of creating a coaching community. We say that it takes a village to raise a child, and so with that, then 
comes Smart Kids Coaching. We, create the, we created a coaching community. It was a pilot program that started in 2015 and has been in existence since. We focus on being a grassroots organization that, that promotes the profile of Virginia graduate. The state of Virginia has already laid out the foundation and the path for its students. So Smart Kids Coaching then focuses on empowering and educating parents. After all, these are our kids and we should be empowered and educated on our role in partnering with businesses. And through that, we have created something called a guided career path. These are skills-based education plans. After all, that's what the state says that we are now moving from a multi-year uh, college focused model to a career readiness model where students are now having to have certain skill sets. So if they have the, if they have to have these certain skill sets, they provide that with the profile of a Virginia graduate, then what we do, we come in each year, we take students that have graduated or completed the seventh grade career investigation course. We then have a process that each year, we identify a certain cohort of students that have completed the course. During the summer, we then provide them with a guided career path. We take the guide, these, the information coming out of the, the, the seventh grade career investigation course, we then incorporate that into a guided career path. We teach them how to create a guided career path. During the fall, we execute that plan. The winter, we go back and look and see if that plan is working. And then in the spring, we take the lessons learned and then we start this cycle all over again. So you see, this is a long-term partnership that we have formed with parents and and students. You already see that one June, I mean, not one June, but June the 30th is when we are, is our deadline for identifying our next cohort of students. Overall, our purpose for this process, our purpose for this process is that once these students leave the seventh grade career investigations course, our goal then is to start preparing them for these career readiness opportunities start referring them to programs like the one that Dr. You just heard from Dr. King, uh, the ones you're about to hear from others that's getting ready to follow this presentation. Our goal is not to, not to create the opportunities, but to better prepare the students to take advantage of these opportunities. Now, here is, let me wrap up with a stark reality in our school system. And this is a, this is a comment to us as parents that if our schools are targeting, I mean, our industries are targeting these two groups, these are students that are graduating from high school, that are graduating from college. However, these are the results. These are the statistics that we as parents are facing. That six out of 10 students that are leaving high school do not have the basic entry-level skills. One out of two that go leave high school and go into college never finish their first year of college. And this one, our college graduates, the statistic says that one out of five spends four years in college, earn, I mean, uh, attain over $30,000 in student debt and still leave college without the basic entry-level skills. That is the reason why Smart Kids Coaching got started because we have to start this process as early as we can, as early as possible. We then get involved with the students as early as the seventh grade career investigation course in order that we then will start this process year after year so that we do not have to come back and have conferences like this pointing out what we should have done. This is now a proactive approach to saying what we are doing. That, my friends, Smart Kids Coaching. Nice if I unmute. So now we hear from Samantha. 
Okay, thank you. I also have a slide deck to share. Um, so I will share my screen. Okay, um, so again, I am Samantha. I'm a systems engineer associate manager at Lockheed, um, directly supporting the talent apprentice program on our Manassas site. And I just um, really appreciate the opportunity to talk about some of the initiatives that we have on our Manassas site. So first about our company, Lockheed Martin. Lockheed is a global security and aerospace company. We take great pride in solving complex challenges, advancing scientific discovery, and delivering innovative solutions to help our customers keep people safe. With over 100,000 employees, we are the largest defense contractor in the world. Our local office is here in Prince William, located in Manassas, where we have just over 1,200 employees. At Lockheed Martin in Manassas, we focus on undersea warfare with our four big programs being sonar submarines, surface ships, aviation, and imaging. On our site, we do have engineering and non-engineering roles. So Lockheed Martin takes great pride in giving back to our local community. We look for many different ways to volunteer and expose young people to STEM. We have um, great partnerships, especially with Prince William County. So being with you today is a great honor. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, we would actually go into classrooms to volunteer and um, we would have events on site. We had two events each year on site where we would bring high school students to speak with engineers and complete engineering projects. Um, over the last year, we have tried to be creative and innovative to still find ways to connect with our local community. So these are the two events that I was just speaking about that we have on site. We have women in STEM and minorities in STEM. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we did transition these to be virtual. And whether it was in person or virtual like last year, um, these students were still given opportunities to connect with some of the brightest engineers in the defense industry. They were able to attend engineering workshops led by subject matter experts, and they even completed an engineering project. So our first initiative we would like to talk about is um, internships. So we have internships both in engineering and in our functional roles, such as finance and human resources. So this is for an individual that is in college or wants to pursue a four year degree. An internship is a great opportunity to build your resume and really learn about what you like and dislike. If you are interested in engineering for Lockheed Martin summer internships, you should actually apply in the fall and winter. So as soon as you move into your dorm, you should be logging on to LockheedMartinJobs.com and pulling up our recs to apply. The reason for this is most of, not all of our engineering apprentice, uh, I'm sorry, engineering internships require a security clearance, and this can take months to obtain. And our functional roles, those are unclassified positions. So we open those job positions in the spring and you can apply then. The next initiative that I would like to talk about is the Talent Apprentice Program. So we are um, DOD contractors. And with our DOD contractors, um, we speak in acronyms and talent is no exception. So talent actually stands for training aspiring locals to engineer a new tomorrow. This initiative kicked off three and a half years ago, and it is for high school graduates that are not immediately entering a four year college or university or students at our local community college. Um, you do need the ability to obtain a secret clearance or security clearance and be willing to work full time as our intern or I'm sorry, our apprenticeship positions are full time 40 hours a week. We do have positions open in engineering and non engineering roles. The reason why we started the talent program is to really capitalize on the ever increasing talent of technical expertise that individuals are gaining 
in high school, thanks to programs like career and technical education, Project Lead the Way, robotics, and the higher level math class that gives students these talents that we can utilize here on our Manassas site. This is an early career opportunity with a path for advancement through training, mentorship, and experience. All of our employees, including our apprenticeships, um, our full-time employees, including our apprentices, receive full benefits, including college tuition reimbursement. So if an individual is pursuing a degree in business or engineering, and they work full-time for Lockheed Martin, they would be eligible for tuition reimbursement. These are some of the benefits that our employees can take advantage of. We have medical, dental, and vision, holiday and paid time off, and we do work a 4-10 flex schedule, which means every single weekend we have a three-day weekend. It is awesome. I love it so much. Um, you can invest in your future with a 401k, and again, there's that tuition reimbursement, which we have over 40 apprentices in our program. And about 70% of them do take classes at Nova or George Mason, and they're taking advantage of that tuition reimbursement. We have a concierge, and we do have employee engagement and what we call the Manassas site games. So most of our positions do require a security clearance. So we always like to bring awareness to your digital footprint. So be conscious of your choices and what you're posting on these many different social media platforms. While Lockheed Martin sponsors employees for secret, uh, security clearances, the final de determination is always granted by the United States federal government. So this picture was actually taken before the COVID-19 pandemic in about October 2019. And even through the pandemic, we were able to grow our program. So if you imagine an extra row of about 10 individuals in the back, that would be the size of our talent apprentice program now with over 40 individuals. So, and you can tell they are, they are young people that come from our local community um, in Prince William, Manassas City, Manassas Park, Fauquier, um, right here and grown in our own backyard. Um, if you are interested in learning more about our initiatives, I would encourage you to look at LockheedMartinJobs.com if you want to apply for one of our positions, either an apprenticeship or an internship. You can actually filter with apprentice or internship and then sort your results by Manassas, Virginia. So again, thank you. It was my pleasure to speak with all of you today about the initiatives that we have here in, at Lockheed Martin in Prince William County. Thank you, Samantha. And last but not least, we have Susanna Steen from Micron Technologies. Thank you so much, Steve. So while I'm pulling up a few of my slides, I just wanted to say that Whatever Samantha said about the pool of talent from Prince William County Schools, as well as Manassas City Schools and Manassas, Manassas Park City Schools, uh, from programs such as um, that are part of the CTE, the Career and Technical Education, such as the Project Lead the Way and others, that really also is of an interest to us. And we also get our team members, our employees connected with the community, volunteer, and help inspire the students so that then when they graduate from high school and enroll at a community college or a four-year institution, they can then uh, apply for some of the internships that we have available and hopefully be converted into full-time positions. But really, just, just for those of you who are not aware who uh, Micron is, we provide various solutions through the memory that we produce. And here in Manassas, we have a manufacturing site that takes uh, memory products from directly from our research and development site in Idaho, and we put it kind of in a mass production. And so we really focus on the automotive uh, area here. So we have an automotive center for excellence here in the city of Manassas. We have approximately 1600 employees here, and we are growing in case if you have not driven by on 28 um, or on Godwin and haven't seen the construction lately that has been taking place the last um, almost two years, uh, I encourage you to drive by. We have expanded, have invested more than $1 billion so far and have hired more than, have created more than uh, 500 positions. We could not have expanded if it had not been for the partnerships that we've had 
with the community college, as well as with the K through 12, and also uh, with universities. So our two types of internships are technician internships and engineering internships. The technician internships are for students who are who are enrolled again at a community college or technical school. And we partner with a program called Year Up that takes students who are high school graduates and um, who you know, want to learn business acumen and get some of the skills that uh, Robert talked about earlier and also Arik, he talked about it as well. And uh, they prepare them, they put them through Nova, Nova classes and then they give them uh, some of the necessary kind of business skills, if you will, and then they come to my crown or we recruit the technician interns directly from Nova. We also recruit uh, our interns that are at the engineering level directly for, from four year institutions once they get into the junior and senior year. A lot of our students, uh, once they get actually converted, we pay for their education and if they want to proceed and become engineers, they can do so. Nova actually was our partner to, they came to the table and they helped us create a program around the necessary skills that our interns and technicians need to have. And that program is called Mechatronics. It's part of engineering technology. And uh, so you heard me right, I know I have an accent, but uh, it's Mechatronics Mechanical slash Electronics put together is Mechatronics. And that is a certification as well as a two year um, applied associates of science uh, degree. And really just so that Nova doesn't create it only around Micron, um, I was able to uh, connect with Steve and his team and they invited other companies to the table, large and, and smaller as well, looking at their need around technician skills. And so based on that, the mechatronics program was born. So I'm, I'm saying all of this uh, really just, just to also be mindful of who is in the audience. Not everyone is working for a large employer. And so just wanted to make sure that we all collectively have a voice. You know, if, if Nova cannot create a program around, you know, a small size company that may have a need for two or three interns, um, you know, technicians or, you know, in, in certain IT, IT areas, we have a collective power as members of the chamber, for example, or you know, of other associations. And then we can speak and, and NOVA has been very attuned to the needs around you know, certain industries, such as you know, Steve mentioned earlier, you know, as it relates to data centers, you know, there's a cloud computing degree that they created. But I just wanted to just show you, you know, this, is, this, this photo was taken in January of 2020 before everything shut down in the new fab lab that Nova built at the Manassas campus. And a lot of these students uh, have gone through programs that Micron has supported, has partnered with, and they have, well, again, pre-COVID, some of them have had a chance to put their hands on some of the equipment in the, in the fab lab, or hopefully, you know, now when everything will be going back to in-person, they'll be able to do so and get the proper hands-on training. So I talked about the technician and engineering careers. So this is just a brief snapshot of really uh, the, the skills that students can get into the door, get their foot into the door, door you know, at Micron. And here also just wanted to give you a snapshot of some of our employee resource groups that we have internally at Micron and also at our local site here in Manassas. And I'm personally responsible for connecting them with the different schools may be K through 12 higher education, uh, such as the community colleges again, or, or four year institutions. And we specifically ask them to be role models and share, especially during career events that students have. And they are happening now in elementary and middle school, as well as high school, of course, and beyond, where if you are looking for someone to share what it's like to be an engineer or a technician, or an MT, you know, we do have a team um, in our environmental and health department as well, or, you know, in HR or accounting to just go into the schools and now virtually, of course, during COVID to share what it's like and what, what career path they took when they themselves were in elementary, middle and high school. So with all of this, just wanted to uh, just encourage you to all of you again, to, to take advantage of the resources that we have available in the community. May it be, again, you know, the partnership with NOVA that we have, 
CTE courses that are available in our schools, as well as uh, the different programs that um, Arik and Robert or Dr. Melvin and Dr. King have with their respective groups, because they are all needed. It's, it, is, it takes a village to raise a child and to get them on the pathway to become you know, a future employee any, of any one of our organizations, right? Our organizations are built, are, are made out of people, right? And so we were all once in, in, um, in high school and, and um, you know, hopefully in some form of college, but really let's take the collective power that we have through the chamber. And if you don't have the talent that you need, and if it's not something that Nova already has, let's look at, you know, who else has a similar need and perhaps there could be something similar at Nova and, or, you know, if something can be built around a crucial kind of, um, you know, curriculum, crucial skill set that again, you know, Steve and his team have built. And of course, there are all these, um, there are credited classes and then there are non-credit classes. So at Micron, we've spent actually more than a million dollars on educating our, our employees through Nova in the last about 11 years. And it is even, the, Nova offers education even for engineers, for students who already have a bachelor's or a master's degree. I know I, I, I sound like I drink the Kool-Aid from Nova, yes, as an incoming chair of the Nova College Board. Yes, I do. But it really has helped upskill, Nova has helped upskill our our team members, I myself have taken classes through NOVA, you know, I've taken certification programs that NOVA offers. So just, um, again, I'm trying to be mindful of who is participating in this event. We are all, many of us are parents. Uh, many of us are, you know, employed and need the talent. And we also have some students here on the call with us that we will talk about, um, about whom we will talk about later. But I just wanted to lay it out here it does not have to be, you don't have to be with a large employer, but we do have the collective uh, power here. Steve, now back to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the Nova commercial. I loved it. Uh, Zuzana's right. What, what she didn't tell you is when I first got her five years ago, her biggest recruitment program from Nova was our automotive because we didn't have a specific program designed for what the needs of Micron were. So uh, in that conversation, it led to a new program, but again, we don't do programs just for one company because we know there's a lot of expense in setting up programs. We really try to make sure it's, it's a industry-wide solution. So that's why we do want to partner with small business, large and small, to really make sure that our students have lots of opportunities. We don't want to just say you have one job in Northern Virginia, it's IT or healthcare. Those are the biggest drivers, but there's thousands of other jobs that go unfilled every year because people just don't know about these jobs. Um, the type of, if you think about where most young people get their information about careers, it's either in the K-12 system and most advisors, career advisors in, in K-12 are usually coming through the education pathway. So they've never actually worked in manufacturing at Micron or in a defense contractor. Uh, so often they're saying, hey, go to college, you'll figure it out there. But our advisors too don't come from industry a lot of times. So how do we, one of the questions Dr. Knight prepared for me to, to kind of talk about is uh, early engagement and mentorship and a career awareness is critical. So how do we, from the panelist perspective, how, how do we increase this awareness? How do we make sure the young people know about these opportunities? How do we make sure they get mentored at scale? It's easy to do things one off, but really if you think about the number of students in Northern Virginia, especially Prince William County, how do we make sure they all have this equal access to these type of opportunities? Anyone wanna jump in? I'll, I'll jump okay. in. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll be real fast. Uh, I just want to say, uh, I think, uh, you know, our, our other panelists have, have commented on it, especially with uh, some of the impressive programs that are happening with Lockheed and, and Micron and Dominion Energy has, you know, strong internship programs as well and diversity student conferences. But I think, I think that's one of the answers, as is making sure that we have deliberate education pathways uh, in partnership with, with the educators like NOVA. Um, so I would say that, you know, we uh, make, have to make sure that we are creating the right level of awareness of the uh, internship opportunities that are out there, be it at the secondary or post-secondary level. We have to make sure that industry is, is frankly leading the way when we're uh, trying to implement programs. And, and Zuzana, I was so glad to hear you mention Mechatronics because, you know, the, it's really important for all of us, I would argue Lockheed, Micron, Dominion, and all of our uh, partners on this call, uh, small, medium, and large, uh, 
with a technical, you know, uh, aspect to our industry can benefit from mechatronics. I know a lot of our operators and technicians on the power generation and even the electric distribution side, uh, you know, can come through that type of program. So, you know, Steve, I guess in summary is creating awareness, making sure that industry truly is leading the way, and then having very easily identifiable and deliberate programs uh, that our students can then hop on and, and kind of follow that pathway. Uh, and from the Future Kings perspective, I can uh, answer that knowledge question. Uh, in our case, Future Kings is a multi-year, multi-level program. And most of, and almost everyone who comes to us comes to us by word of mouth. It is one of the students in our program who then recruits another student. They've been talking in the hallway, et cetera, et cetera. And, and uh, so that is one way that we get the word out. The other way is through our parents. Uh, parents are excited about what their sons are learning. And uh, what we find is that the parents and the young men are the are biggest advocates and the biggest ones to, to put the word out. Uh, since we meet on Saturdays, if you can get a kid to come out to a Saturday meeting so it lasts from nine to one, then you know they will really like it. And that's where our advertising comes from. Anyone else from the panel? Yeah, I you? would like to also add to that. And the question that I understood was how do we, uh, how do we expand this? How do we reach a, 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 a broader audience? And I would suggest that uh, our school counselors are a great advocate. Our school counselors, we put a lot of, a lot of uh, weight, if you will, on our school counselors and expect for them to do a lot. And making them aware of opportunities like this so that they might then be able to refer, some, refer the students to opportunities like these who then will help alleviate some of the stress off of, off of them would be a great opportunity, I mean, would be a great pathway to, uh, to expanding this because we have over what, 100 schools, at least in, in Prince William County schools. And if our, if our counselors were aware of these, of these opportunities, I think then if they were to plug in and uh, be able to have a source where they can then refer them to when students come to, uh, we refer them to these opportunities when students come to them. I think that would be a way to expand this. May I and add I, to I what? I think the parents, the counselor are a great resource, but I would recommend more going to where the kids are and trying to get them. So they're on social media and we know where they are. Uh, we can put the word out there or, or ask the kids in our, in our environment to put the word out to their friends. Uh, I think that uh, our experience has been that kids listen to other kids a lot faster than they listen to adults. And so if we go to where they are uh, and get them to advocate for others, I think that they'll come to the programs that we're trying to support. Yeah, I would like to add to what Dr. Melvin said. So at Lockheed Martin, our, our partnerships um, are very important to us. We have someone from Lockheed Martin that sits on the Spark Board on Manassas City Education Foundation, as well as with Manassas Park. Um, but we've also connected with individual Project Lead the Way teachers, CTE teachers, um, and we've actually been able to host the career counselors um, for Prince William County on our site, um, was able to give them an overview of what we do, give them a tour of our site, and let them ask us questions about what kind of what kind of students are we looking for? What, what makes them career ready you know, to enter the workforce as soon as they graduate high school? So we did that with the career counselors and we were actually able to do that with the science teachers as well. The, the science director of Prince William County reached out to us and asked if they could have a professional development day on our site. Um, and we were allowed them to do that. We had some great learning time and really connected with those science teachers. So I think partnerships, um, if you can form them are, are really great because now they know about our program in, in science and in the career counselor world. You know, I think that one's critical. I've seen a lot of successful school districts where they do these sort of industry day where they go out to local manufacturers or to get kids and teachers because a lot of times again the teachers influence a lot of future career choice or guidance counselors and often they don't get an opportunity to go visit the real world. You know, I, my kids are glued to the TV on like these 
TV shows in the History Channel about where food is made and the history of food and how it's manufactured. And they're fascinated because they you know, go to the grocery store, they don't know how it's made. But a lot of kids just don't know about these jobs because they don't know what's in their own backyard. And if we can get more, it's hard to get every student an opportunity to do that at scale in our region, but to get the teachers out there in certain disciplines, I think it's critical. So you've got a captive audience of almost 50 business leaders on this phone. So I hope after this call, more people will decide to volunteer and, and open their doors to teachers and counselors. Anything from your angle, Susanna? I would just add to what Samantha said, um, in addition to, to hosting the different counselors and CT teachers and, and, and students also, and, and, and parents um, in, in a lot of cases that, that we've done prior to COVID and hope to res resume soon. I do want to encourage you to take advantage of the different programs that we have um, through the chamber, serve on committees and get, get involved. And um, maybe through the Education and Workforce Committee that is actually um, the organizer um, of this event or through some of the other committees and councils that are there. And um, again, you know, you have parents as well as um, different business representatives that are participating. You know, we all wear multiple hats and we have multiple roles in our communities, but to actively share information about what is needed in your, in your industry, in your respective company. If you cannot give a tour, then at least get involved. Uh, whenever we promote through the chamber with the help of Suzanne Lewis, and Debbie Jones, different career events in schools, sign up, get involved, share with the students. And you'll often find that the students will then want to come back. They will have a buy-in and want to be an intern at your company if they've seen you volunteering, even in robotics events. So, you know, once we go back to the, the previous normal, I encourage you to sign up to volunteer, be a judge at the robotics competition, or to be, you know, to help um, coaches we have, an amazing coach here uh, on this call of a first robotics team and, and the robotics queen, Denise Carroll as well. So um, she can get you plugged in. But a lot of the students remember when they see chamber members volunteering, sharing with them. And then they are basically, they become ambassadors for our community and it's easier for them to then sign up and apply for internships. Great. Well, we have a few questions in the chat that I wanna also get to, cause we're, we're getting down to the last almost 15 minutes or so left on our panel. Uh, one of the questions about how COVID has impacted sort of the learning and I'll take it to the panel as well. Um, it, how has it impacted internships? How has it impacted mentoring with your organization in a, in a remote mode? So maybe I'll open the panel first before I talk about how Nova's dealt with it. Anyone wanna do with how COVID has impacted your, your core ability to interact with students? Um, it has definitely impacted our ability. Um, so when COVID-19 first hit, um, you know, in, in March of 17, 2020 was my last full day on site. Um, I've been working from home since then. And that was right before our minorities in STEM event. And unfortunately, we had to cancel it. We didn't know, you know, COVID-19 was brand new and we didn't know how to adapt. Um, and then we we quickly figured it out. So by the fall, we were able to offer our women in STEM um, virtual. Uh, we've actually been able to go, we used to go into classrooms and, and volunteer, um, do some hands-on learning, and we have not been able to do that. Um, so what we did instead is set up Zoom sessions and we've been able to share and volunteer that way. Um, it is not to the scale that we used to do. We used to be in classrooms and be on robotics teams and, and really have a hand on that guiding and mentoring. Um, so it's definitely scaled back, but we are very proud that we've been able to, to maintain a commitment there. Um, as far as recruiting for our program, um, this is um, we don't have as many resumes as we used to, so um, we do have some job rec open. So if you're interested in, in the Talent Apprentice Program, a full-time position, I would encourage you to go to LockheedMartinJobs.com. Uh, from our side, from Future King's side, uh, one of the first impacts was we had to cut back the number of students that we could handle. Uh, we had to make a decision about if we were going to stay true to our experiential learning or we were going to try to shoehorn something in. Uh, so we cut back the number of kids so that we could uh, continue to provide them that type of hands-on support. So often in a Zoom setting, 
it's very, very difficult to, uh, to oversee the, the issues that the students are having. Uh, and that was the primary reason why we had to cut back. So uh, that was a major impact. And I'm so glad that things are opening back up again so we can go back to doing things that we, the way we usually do it. But I will say that uh, the, uh, the, the constraints and obstacles presented by being remote uh, were, were a big challenge for us. I'll, I'll chime in real quick. And I first want to say this, uh, and I hope we don't leave this discussion without acknowledging the work that uh, Dr. King and, and Dr. Melvin do. Uh, the, the types of wraparound and connective services that they offer uh, are extremely important. And so I'll use that as, for, so first of all, thank you, gentlemen. And I'll, I'll, I'll use that as a bit of a segue to how Dominion Energy was able to respond. And I cannot take credit. It was uh, our talent acquisition leadership and our student employment program coordinators. But uh, we made a very quick decision knowing back in March of last year that our interns were only a couple months away from, from joining us. And, and traditionally, that is obviously in person. Typically, we have uh, well over 200, typically between 200 and three, excuse me, 250 and 300 interns with us across our 16 state footprint. And we just we, we knew we had to stay committed to uh, the, the commitments that we made to them to employing them and all of them uh, came on board with us virtually. Uh, so without going through the logistics of how that worked, but we obviously made sure that they had their necessary equipment, access, and that they were still connected to the meaningful work that we already had planned for them uh, in their respective departments. There were some instances where we had students that had to, to pivot and maybe go to and support a different group. So for example, we have an innovation group, we have a new technology group, uh, some of those students might have pivoted to groups like that, where they were still able to contribute their talents, much like the students we have on with us today, but they were able to still contribute their talents to how we, Dominion Energy, are advancing our, our business and industry. Uh, some of the ways that we stayed engaged, I was really, again, appreciative of my peers sharing how involved their employee resource groups are, no matter how, how many they have or how, how large they are having some sort of uh, grassroots initiative or employee resource group initiative allowing employees to stay engaged in that way is really important and that's uh, a lot of what we did is, is tap into our ergs to engage students one-on-one -on -one. Uh, our, our student employment program set up things like facetime fridays where for an hour at a time we can all sign up and and just have one-on-one -on -one conversations with with whichever students we get paired up with and and really, you know, things like that allow us to uh, to stay engaged, let the students see who we are, hear from us, uh, have virtual tours and things like that. And then I'll just kind of wrap by saying, you know, one of the things that makes Dominion Energy really special is is our culture. Um, you know, we are rooted in all of our core values, which are safety, ethics, excellence, embrace change and teamwork. And we were still able to sustain that virtually uh, over this past year uh, and will continue to do so virtually as needed. But, but like the others, we're very excited to, to get back to uh, in-person and, and normal business interaction because our interns and other uh, education partnerships are really, you know, frankly, they are our future. Uh, so it's important that we sustain this activity. And, and Steve, I'd just like you to throw in a very quick comment on uh, career coaching and the impact of career coaching, because when we did our pilot program back in 2015, it was designed, it, it was designed to be able to, to assess the environment. Uh, what impact will it have? And if I have a plan in place, then I am not chasing a program, I am chasing the outcomes of my goals. And so therefore COVID presented an opportunity, a different opportunity, but yet it was an environment that students can still develop those skill sets that they need. What skill sets? Creative thinking, collaboration. Those are still skill sets that the state of Virginia identified as uh, the, the, the need for students to master. So COVID did in fact help the uh, coaching community because they were able to see that it was not program driven, but it was goal driven. And they were able to find these opportunities, but they had to learn how to look for them and then how to adapt them to their, to their respective goals. Yep, great point.
And from a Nova perspective over the past year, I mean, obviously, like all higher ed, we went virtual. But what we've really seen is the hybrid models being something that going forward, students really appreciate when they get the feedback from them. This sort of learn anywhere model that we're sort of adapting as we come out of COVID is people's life of our students are always changing. Uh, maybe they work shift work and they're always working different schedules. And yes, this Tuesday they have time for a class, but next Tuesday they don't. And yet we have still locked ourselves into a model pre-COVID, which is you have to drive from wherever you're coming from to your campus. And traffic, as we all know, in Northern Virginia can be very unpredictable. That might be a 30 minute commute. Next week, it might be an hour plus commute. And our students in a remote environment really sort of appreciate the lack of a commute. They also really asked for a lot of services that they used to have to go to campus to get in a remote mode. Why do I have to meet with advice in person again? I mean, can't I just call you on a Zoom call and have that conversation? So we are gonna keep a lot of our services remote because our students appreciate it. But also as a parent, I also saw kids that got sick that were going in person later this year that all of a sudden they didn't feel well one day, they didn't have to miss and get behind. They could just log in and continue with their learning. And so our, I think, higher ed is gonna pivot a little and offer a lot more from a student perspective of what works for them and less about what works for us. Let's see, I don't see any more questions in the chat and we're coming down to our last few minutes. So I'm gonna kind of go a little lightning round, maybe give everyone 30 seconds to kind of maybe closing thoughts about maybe anything from today or anything we missed that you'd like to sort of hit on or things you really wanna stress to the participants on the call about what workforce development, how it's changed in Northern, Northern Virginia, anything about innovation in workforce or learning that you would wanna really hit home today. I'll give you a second to think about that before I call you. Well, I, I was gonna say, I'll go ahead and you start. You wanna go last this time, Matt? Uh, well, I, sure, uh, but I was gonna go ahead and start uh, go just ahead. alphabetically and give other people time to, to think. Uh, so my experience, uh, first of all, I appreciate you, you posing that question. Uh, my experience in working with uh, folks with the Employment Commission and their labor market information side, because obviously the, the knowing the demand metrics are so important, uh, working with others in the industry. So you know, Dominion Energy uh, partners very closely with all of our small, medium and large partners in the industry. Uh, and then and then the educators, you know, one of the things that we understand is, yes, knowing the demand uh, is, is so important in order to have a productive conversation with the education partners but then also being able to show up together. So whether it's you know, our small, medium and large companies in the energy industry or uh, industry showing up together. So whether it's you know, Dominion, Micron, Lockheed, showing up together uh, to say, yes, we all have this collective demand. Uh, and then as it translates down to what's being taught at the schools, uh, one thing that I've learned in the past decade is that the core skills, the technical skills that our hiring leaders want to see uh, students or graduates showing up with, that hasn't really changed, and I don't think that will, will actually change for another 10, 20, 30 years. Now, the new technologies that you, you know, stack on top of that, those will, of course, evolve. So anyway, those are just a couple points that stand out. And then just in closing, as far as it relates to innovation and engagement, um, I, think, I think that those can take all sorts of sh you know, shapes and, and forms. Uh, the energy industry, uh, we did partner with schools and actually started uh, in partnership with the Virginia Chamber of Commerce at the state level. Uh, get into energy innovation challenge and then we quickly realized that that was going to be really challenging for us to manage so we offered it up nationally to the center for energy workforce development to offer that innovation challenge virtually so uh, and then in each school had to have an industry partner so you know again translating it to how can everyone get engaged there's all sorts of opportunities it doesn't have to to be you know, groundbreaking, but if you just you know, make an effort to reach out to participate on the chamber, partner with you know, other companies and educators, uh, there are so many ways that you can, can make an impact. And, and I hope you know, the folks in the audience can take that away from us today. Uh, I would just like to say that from the Future King's perspective, uh, one of the reasons why we are adding artificial intelligence and machine learning to our program is because that we believe that artificial intelligence is an innovative technology that is on the on the cutting edge and will be making significant impacts in the education arena. How we how we train people uh, and and how people learn. And so, what we're hoping to do is get on the front end of that. And as as part of our upcoming artificial intelligence machine language program, uh, we're hoping that we can 
find partners both in, in the school districts, other businesses, uh, sponsors and donors who might be able to see uh, where education is going and the impact that AI ML is going to have on education in the not so distant future. And from a career coaching perspective, I would like to make a, uh, a clarion call to parents. If your child has just wrapped up and completed the seventh grade career investigation course, coming out of that course, if they do not have a guided career path, if they do not have a direction that says, this is where I'm going, this is how I'm going to get there. That, this is why we, Smart Kids Coaching was created. Because as you sit here and you listen, you hear all of the opportunities, all of the opportunities that, that, uh, that Future Kings are offering, all the opportunities at Micron, all the opportunities that industry, dominion, that they're offering. But here in part, herein lies the problem. And that is, if I don't have a plan, if I don't have a plan that, that is designed to help me get to that or have a path designed for me to get to those objectives, then a goal without a plan is nothing but a dream. So if you want to help your child to turn those goals into reality, you're going to have to, we will be glad to work with you to help create a pathway for your child and be able to take what's coming out of that career investigation course career investigations course and actually turn it into a pathway so that they then will be able to go. And I'll use, I'll use Future Kings as, only as an example. So they then will be able to go into there with the skill sets that Dr. King then can build upon. Um, as I think about an innovative way to really build our workforce. I, I think I have to re-echo building those partnerships um, with our Prince William County Schools. Um, we, we have found great success in hiring and the Talent Apprentice Program, hiring directly from our Prince William County Schools. And we've been able to leverage our expertise that we have through our experienced professionals to go in and do some mentoring, do some hands-on activities with them and build those partners and, and build that, that friendship really. Um, so when I think about being innovative, I, I think that's what I can really take away and, and encourage others to do is to build those partnerships and really leverage the expertise that you have on in your company and on your site um, to really invest back into the community and to our young people. Hi guys, I, I'm, I'm Denise Carroll. I run the robotics program for Prince William County Schools. I'm actually at Patriot High School with the Seaperch kids from Patriot that are competing this weekend at the International Seaperch Challenge. A number of our chamber members here have actually been volunteers at the Seaperch tournaments that we've done um, from the chamber. So um, we were able to act much smaller than we used to. Um, I'd like to uh, thank our friends from Lackey Martin and Micron because they have had our students that are my robotics students that have internships and apprenticeships at these programs and they do go on and do wonderful things. So if you get a chance to go into a school or volunteer at an opportunity, even if you read, this is, um, not everything is technical, like with robotics. Um, number of my kids need soft skills, like how do you do a handshake or eye contact with our judges? How do you write for the engineering notebook? Are you an artist? Can you draw three-dimensionally? Can you think mechanically like that to be able to help the kids like that? Um, and even if you've never judged before, we'll put you with someone who's judged and then you could talk to the kids and learn about what they're doing, what they're thinking. And you could share about your business and what you do too, because that's how they're gonna learn. Um, I heard a lot of people talking about how do you get these kids their stuff and how do you get them internships, but can't get experience they Oh, Denise, I'm so sorry. You're Denise, you're actually breaking up and we're that's all I want to say. So I'm a member of the chamber for years. Hi, Denise, you're unfortunately breaking up, but she yep. is in the chat box for those of you who are interested to reach out and talk with her. But I am gonna uh, toss it back over to Steve so that we can continue the program. But thank you so much, Denise. 
sorry, you are now you're frozen. <laughs> So if, if I just may add, you know, Steve, kind of as, as my wrap up, you know, everything that has been said and also thanks to Denise, who actually is my predecessor. Um, she was a chair or co-chair of this Prince William Chambers Education and Workforce Committee for many years. And so just really wanted to encourage now, um, you know, putting on that, that head of a co-chair of our of our committee and being involved with the chamber, just want to encourage you when you do have, when you do get a call for volunteers for either virtual or in person to go into the different career days, uh, to go into robotics, you know, you don't have to be technical to Denise's point, or you can go to the National Young Readers Day or, or other programs that the chamber sponsors and supports. I encourage you to sign up and even more so encourage your colleagues to sign up and just um, you know, help give back and then you will get back uh, you know, tenfold or, or a lot more than what you put in because it really is, uh, you, you will see it from some of the write-ups about our scholarship winners. Many of them were influenced by programs that companies offered in our region and they were inspired and they, it helped them just kind of get that plan together and know the, the goal that they that they had. So to Dr. Melvin's point. Thank you, Susanna. That, great thank point. you. Thank you. And thank you to the entire panel. For those on the call, everyone's emails is on the screen. And I'm sure it, if you don't have a pen in front of you, we can get this PowerPoint to you. So you can email if you have any follow-up questions. Again, thank you to all members of the panel. Thank you for having me as your moderator. And I look forward to continue to work with the chamber and the Prince William business community to make sure that all our students have these opportunities because you never know what sparks a child's interest. And so making sure all these programs are out there to make sure everyone has a path forward. Nicole, I'll kick it to you now. Introducing Mobile Branders Promotions and Marketing. Get your brand noticed. Affordable and direct media solution that allows innovative advertising, unlimited power to gain immediate attention at an affordable cost. A proven method of drawing attention to your business to increase your revenue and profit. Here's how Mobile Branders works. First, you decide on your message and work with our expert team to craft your attention-getting ad. Then you decide when you want your campaign to start and end. Next, you decide which area you want to run your campaign. We get to work. Start increasing your revenue today by Mobile Branders. Visit our website, www.mobilebranders.com or contact us at 800-277-7398. Hello, my name is Tom Offer, and I'm proud to serve as the principal of St. Paul VI Catholic High School. We recently moved last summer from Fairfax to Chantilly in the South Riding area, so we are very close to Prince William. We're thankful to participate in Prince William Chambers Education and Workforce Summit. At Paul VI, we strive to expose our students to the STEM fields, the science, technology, engineering, and, mathematics um, courses. Our computer science program wanna... has received 
wonderful accolades over the last few years for participation of female students in advanced placement computer science courses. We offer directed independent study courses that allow our students to independently work and select a topic that they want to learn more about. Thank you for letting us join you and we would love to have volunteers join us for our school's career day and guest speakers in certain courses. Hey there, I'm Katie from Apple. We're a local credit union. That just means we're a not-for-profit financial institution, so we can give back to our account holders and the community because it's the right thing to do. We also offer great rates on loans and savings accounts, and we have discounts for our members on home, auto, and renter's insurance. We also work with local businesses, nonprofits, and schools. We offer personal finance seminars tailored to your specific group, and that's for free. If you're a local business in need of a loan or a primary financial institution, we've got you covered there too. Maybe you're a nonprofit and you need some people to help out with volunteer hours. Our employees love giving back to the community. For more information, visit us online at applefcu.org. Okay, so I'm not sure if anyone else is hearing the silence that I have here, that, that, I, that I have here in my headphones. So I'm just going to now continue with the program. And Nicole, was there anything else you were, you were going to show or can I go ahead and speak? Nope, I think you are good. I have something that didn't play, but we'll tag it over at the end. You're good. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, you know, thank you again, Steve, for being the moderator of our panel and thanks to all the engagement that, that we got uh, and the questions and the comments and thanks to the panelists for, for being with us. Now I would like to introduce John, Joe Stainsby, OmniRide's Chief Development Officer. Welcome, Joe. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sana. Um, so I'm Joe Stainsby um, from OmniRide. I want to congratulate all of the uh, sponsorship winners. Uh, OmniRide is, of course, the transit agency for Prince William County, Manassas and Manassas Park, and also Stafford County as well now. Um, we aim to bring mobility, not just bus service, to all of the folks that we serve. Uh, we also offer van pooling, ride sharing, teleworks. Uh, and also various different pass programs. A couple of things I want to draw people's attention to are our Nova Student Pass Program. That's obviously a continuing program and very relevant for the folks on the call today. And we're also working with Prince William County, Manassas and Manassas Park um, with the uh, Career Technical Education Program um, through the Education and Workforce Committee of the Chamber of Commerce um, to bring a, a voucher program to them, which will allow the students to be able to get more effectively across and through the county to be able to participate in so many of the wonderful opportunities that folks on the call today have been talking about. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, OmniRide. It's now time to award the $2,500 scholarships to the deserving students who have demonstrated academic excellence and a commitment to volunteer service in our community. This is an extremely competitive program and another benefit of chamber membership since one of the qualifiers is that they have to be a dependent of a chamber member. I'd like to start with the representative from Micron for our first, scholar our first scholarship sponsor. Welcome back, Susanna Steen from Micron. Thank you so much, Katie. All right, so I have here a great honor to introduce to you the first, first winner of the 
Prince William Chamber Scholarship. So let me, let me just introduce to you Elena Ming Harrison. So Ming is a graduate of Osborne Park High School and plans to attend NOVA for two years and then transfer to Virginia Tech's engineering program. Her career aspiration is to be a project manager in the engineering field to play a role in building a better community. Ming's teacher described her intellectual curiosity as always asking the question of why and how concepts work and connect, which is a perfect fit for her aspirations. Having an aptitude for problem solving, organizing and making things work more effectively, Ming plans to pursue a career in industrial engineering. Ming has embraced leadership positions since her fourth grade, beginning in the safety patrol and later in middle school receiving the citizenship award. For their school's live newscasts, Ming earned the first TV production award as the director, cinematographer, excuse my language here, and producer. Moving on to high school, high school Ming joined her first robotics competition of F FRC and first tech challenge, FTC, robotics teams, ending up as the project manager and captain for her teams. In another whole direction, Ming joined the school's K-pop and K-fusion dance teams performing at high school pep rallies. To name just a few of Ming's honors, in addition to many of her academic achievements, they include participating in BAE Systems Women in Technology program and being selected as a team member for the Virginia State General Assembly. Ming also earned a superior rating in the National Federation of Music. A large part of who Ming is today is due to the volunteer and community mission work she has done through Grace United Methodist Church. Her involvement began in their Ashbury Choir and Chimers program, where she eventually became their assistant director. During the summers, she went on mission trips with the youth group and choir to help communities with construction, demolition, painting, and yard work projects. They traveled to communities throughout Virginia to sing at churches and assisting, assisted living facilities. Growing up in the Grace Church community has instilled in her the importance of giving back recognizing the needs of others and being grateful for her own blessings. So on behalf of Micron, it is with an honor that I award Ming Harrison a scholarship in the amount of $2,500. So Ming, congratulations. You definitely impressed not only uh, the scholarship judges who looked at your written application, but also those of us who were on a panel and who met you Zoom to Zoom and who had the privilege to interview you and just ask a lot of questions and also answer some of your questions that you had for us. So I would like to actually now give the microphone to you um, if you wanted to speak for a minute. Uh, uh, hello, I'm Ming Harrison. Uh, I'm from and I just like to thank the Prince William Chamber of Commerce for awarding me one of the scholarships. It's greatly appreciated and will be put to good use towards my education. I'd also like to thank my immediate family, my church family, and my school family for all the support over the years that they've given me. Thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you so much, Ming, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we have from Dominion Energy, a founding sponsor for the chamber. I would like to welcome Matt to actually present the next student who is the next scholarship recipient. Matt? Thank you, Zuzana. And it is my honor on behalf of Dominion Energy who uh, stays very engaged and cares very deeply about our social, economic, education, and just other philanthropic engagements. Uh, it's my honor to be able to present this award on behalf of Dominion Energy to Christopher Turner. Uh, Christopher Turner will be graduating with a 4.7 grade point average from Charles J. Colgan Senior High School and plans to attend uh, the University of Virginia in the fall, majoring in neuroscience. 
His interest in studying neuroscience results in part from his own dealings with chronic migraines and his, his grandmother's Parkinson's disease. As a student, he's been described by his teachers as a dream kid. With 13 AP level classes on his transcript, it's clear uh, that Chris is, embraces academic challenge while managing somehow <laughs> to be an active volunteer at both his school and the community. He served on the student council all four years. He earned his Eagle Scout, played on the lacrosse team, swim team, and ran cross country. And he was selected for Project Lead the Way Engineering Specialty Program. He was one of 10 out of 707 students nominated to the Colgan Youth Salute for Leadership and Community Service. He has also served as a campaign intern for a Virginia delegate and congressman, honored veterans at Reagan Airport as they visited DC memorials, and has been a coordinator for the West Virginia Flood Victim Relief Program. When asked about the accomplishment that he was most proud of, Chris talked about his experiences as a junior auxiliary at Centera Northern Virginia Medical Center, where he spent over 90 hours serving the sick. He initiated tasks such as taking the care cart to every ICU room, assisted nurses and physicians making surgical beds, preparing ER blood tests, teaching pandemic procedures to the new volunteers, and using his Spanish to communicate with patients and visitors so that they felt more comfortable during their hospital visit. This all excuse me, through his, all of his volunteer experiences, Chris describes being humbled by stories of how people who overcome great obstacles and more determined to lead life of a selfless service. 10 years from now, Chris anticipates having worked on projects such as providing disaster relief in impoverished areas, teaching English to kids in a Peruvian village in the Amazon, and more aligned to his career contributing to neurological stem cell research in Edinburgh. It is his career goal to not climb the fiscal ladder, but in his words, to appreciate relationships, service the needy, and progress the global movement of medical research. Christopher, on behalf of Dominion Energy, it is with an honor that I award a $2,500 scholarship to you, Christopher Turner. Thank you, sir, and congratulations. And Christopher, if you'd like, uh, you may uh, say a few words. Thank you so much, Mr. Kellum. Um, this is truly a great honor to be selected by the committee um, and to be with all these community leaders in the county. Um, it, it's awesome to hear all, how, um, what everyone is doing to contribute to other kids' growth within the community because um, I know that when I was like early on in high school, I was searching for opportunities to get involved and stuff. and I looked towards my counselors and my teachers and my parents and they helped me so much. So your discussions about um, reaching out to the, to the school and to parents and to just to the communities, um, that means a lot. And um, yeah, I really, I just really appreciate everything you did for me and the, this money will go to great use at UVA. Thank you. Absolutely, congratulations, uh, very well deserved. Now from Lockheed Martin, uh, welcome back, Samantha Peterson, Systems Engineer Associate Manager, who will be presenting the next student scholarship recipient. Samantha. Thank you. Um, Lockheed Martin is proud to be a student scholarship sponsor, and I am very privileged to um, read about Lisa Raj Singh, whose academic excellence and community service is quite remarkable. So Lisa is a graduate at Thomas Jefferson High School located in Alexandria and plans to attend the University of Chicago majoring in public policy and computer science. During her years at TJ, while facing the demands of a very challenging curriculum, she managed to find the time to serve both her school and community. Lisa worked as a teacher for children ages six to 12 in math, reading, concepts of robotics, and exclusively taught Arduino coding. She worked as a field organizer for a Senate campaign in the Kentucky primaries, making over 1,500 phone calls in just a few weeks. To compile information for a Students for Equity reform proposal, she conducted detailed data analysis, lobbied school board members, and met with professors to make their case, an effort that was covered in a recent Washington Post article. 
Lisa was an appointed student representative to collaborate alongside Fairfax County Public School teachers and administration to evaluate teacher retention issues and presented their findings to the school board. For outreach lead, Lisa provided online tutoring for over 100 students during the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to the tutoring, she recruited sponsors, hosted a, st a STEM symposium to financially support their, stu their school's cause of launching a rocket into space. For young students with special needs, Lisa designed yoga classes to help strengthen them physically and improve their ability to focus. She was also selected for Virginia Girls State and an active member of the TJ Speech and Forensics team winning first place at the VHSL regionals and qualified for states. From all of her activities and accomplishments, the one that she is most proud of is being elected as the Arbitrator Secretary General for the high school's 100 member Model United Nations team. She spent countless hours coaching and reviewing research papers to prepare her students for the conference with over 900 attendees. Remembering the conferences, it was not about preparing for her own successes, but rather embracing the rewards of seeing the smiling faces of her students for a job well done. On behalf of Lockheed Martin, it is with honor that I award a $2,500 scholarship to Lisa Raj Singh. And I don't, I believe Lisa had a sign off early. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> and she actually provided, um, I'm trying to find it. I just lost it. I can't believe it. Hang on one second. It was just so sweet. Um, not surprisingly, Lisa had to um, go for a job. <laughs> so, <laughs> but she did actually write something. So I'm going to um, share it with you just as she wrote it. And here it goes. She says, Thank you to my father for building a life here in the United States and helping me become the first from my family to attend college. Thank you to my mother for showing me it is possible to balance a career and family. And thank you to my little sister. Oh, oh she's so sweet. <laughs> and thank you for my little sister for showing her creativity and all her, her young energy. And then finally, she wanted to thank everybody here for all their support to her and anybody else who has supported her over the years and how grateful she is. Um, so anyway, those were her words um, that she wanted to share with everybody. She wished she could have been here to say them herself, but she, not surprisingly, had to run off uh, to a job. As you could tell, these kids are pretty high octane and they do so many amazing things. So I just wanted to share those words from her. Thank you so much, Suzanne. And we're going to sure. take a brief, Susanna, I apologize. We're going to interrupt for just a second to play back the um, steady silence that I thought was this commercial. Here we go. And everyone can see it, hear it, right? Perfect. Can see it. And yes. What I love about Historic Manassas is that it has so much to offer with the arts. You want to talk about process, growth, strategy, reaching your goals. Let's have a conversation. And now we can continue. Thank you so much, everyone, for your patience while we worked that bit out. <laughs> Go ahead, Susanna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole. Well, congratulations to all winners and also to 
all of the families and thanks again to all the sponsors who helped make this possible. It was a great list of accomplishments and we really look forward to what the future holds for the students and I hope you stay in touch. I hope you will, you know, from time to time send us an email uh, here at Chamber or, you know, me personally and I'll share it with the rest of the team and uh, just how you are doing and uh, hopefully you will also come back at some point into our into our community. So I would also like to thank members of the uh, Prince William Chambers Education and Workforce Committee who volunteered with adjudication of these scholarship applications and finally who helped with the Zoom to Zoom interviews. And of course, I would like to thank the Prince William Chamber team and specifically uh, Nicole and Suzanne Lewis. Suzanne, as, as I understand, um, has announced her retirement. So she will be leaving the chamber and this group uh, at the beginning of July, but I would like to really thank Suzanne for her tireless dedication, not only to our committee, but also to other, other uh, councils and committees within the chamber and to our community overall. Suzanne, I have, um, ever since I personally joined the chamber when I came to Micron in 2010, you have been supporting us in our work and, and I do want to thank you and please stay in touch. And uh, mm -hmm. I know you will, remain connected with uh, various students as you'll be advising on um, different careers and, and college future. But I, I do wanna say thank you. Thank you, Suzanne, I really appreciate that. I've really enjoyed my 10 years here at the Chamber. You know, I've never really seen it as a job. I mean, I really look forward to coming every day. I know that's not an easy thing to say for a lot of people, but I really mean it sincerely. Just the members and the staff have been fantastic and I will miss you all. It was a very hard decision to make, but onward and upward to new ventures. But thank you for that. I really appreciate your comments. Thank you, Suzanne. And I would also like to thank the rest of the leadership team um, of the Education and Workforce Committee, my partners in crime, namely Janae Monroe, Eugene Brown, and Ramanda Young. You all have been serving faithfully and just, just really helping our community. And I would like to pause here and just spend a couple of minutes uh, here on someone really, really special who is also leaving us, and that is Ramanda Young. So Ramanda is moving on to new opportunities on a state and national level. And while I'm glad she's going to stay in Prince William County, I know she's, her and her family are staying put, they are not moving. Uh, their do daughter Mahogany will continue uh, in, our, in our Prince William County schools here. Ramanda will be involved in, in other ways. So she is stepping down from her NOVA you know, day job, from her role here on our committee and also from the Education Foundation uh, boards where she has served with Manassa City Schools and Manassa Park Schools, as well as, you know, in other areas where she has served and volunteered so faithfully. Ramanda, ever since I came into, uh, into this region and uh, just, you know, we've served alongside each other for many years, just your energy, faithfulness and really dedication to our youth, mentoring, young people and being a role model has been truly an inspiring and um, really what you have done also for, for NOVA in our community is amazing. And so I'll be watching you and all of us, many of us who are connected with you uh, through social media, Facebook and Instagram and other means. We look forward to seeing you also on TV. I know, um, you know, uh, former President Obama was a part of um, part of your, your business, you know, came and participated in your program. We saw you on some um, national TV programs as well. So, but I just wanted to give the floor to you if you wanted to say some remarks um, before I shed a tear here. My dear Zuzana, you put me on the spot, but um, I've known you for many years personally before we even, before I came to Nova, we served on another, another board for NBTC um, and Equal Footing Foundation, but it has been an honor to serve here on the board um, on this committee. Debbie Jones, I don't want to start naming off all the people, but Debbie Jones and Suzanne um, Lewis have been amazing, amazing champions for education and also my partners in crime too, um, Zuzana, Eugene, and Janae, um, and for a long time, Michelle, um, with all of our National Young Readers Day, really just helping kids fall in love with reading and books 
um, and the, the warm kits. We've done a lot over these years. So it's been an honor to serve with this passionate group of leaders from Prince William County and beyond. And to this year's scholarship recipients, I had the honor of meeting all three of you on the Zoom to Zoom, um, chairing this committee for the last time. It's been an honor and I wish each of you well. Without a doubt, I am confident that each of you will go on to do great things and represent our area well. So anyway, thank you. I won't take up any more time, but it's been an honor to serve on this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Ramanda. All right, and uh, last but not least, I wanted to say thank you also to the superintendents of Prince William County Schools, Manassas Park City Schools, and Manassas City Public Schools, who have served really, uh, and, and their team there um, on the administration of their respective school districts. They have been working with our committee. Um, we've also worked closely with the CTE directors for each of the school, school divisions. I know that Dr. Waltz and Dr. Bruce McDade will be retiring, moving on, and uh, we will have new superintendents. So I understand that um, Dr. Saunders, who, who is now the deputy superintendent for Manassas City Schools, will take over the um, super intendantship of Manassas Park Schools, and then we'll get another Dr. McDade to be a superintendent of Prince William County Schools. So it's a, it's a mouthful here, but just, just excited about the opportunities that we have to partner with these th three school divisions, the support that we have enjoyed from their administration and partnership with the CTE directors, as well as uh, with some counselors. And we look forward to really expanding our outreach there at the, um, the school, the career counseling uh, services. So I would now like to pass the baton to Virginia Lottery and Katie. the honor of closing today's event. So I wanna thank once again, our sponsors and the Prince William Chamber of Commerce for hosting. Thank you again to our Education and Innovation Committee year sponsor, OmniRide, and all of our sponsors for this year. That ends today's program. We've recorded the program so that you can share it with your family, friends, and members of the community. And we'll send a message when that's available. Congratulations again, scholars. Thank, Thank you. you all. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Congratulations again to all of the students. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.